All right, guys. Um, so, uh, yeah, this is uh, not exactly how I, I wanted to do this, but uh, my uh, my good camera just simply would not turn on tonight. So um, we're going to have to do things uh, a little differently. All right, um, so it's going to take me just a little bit to get things reset up, um, mostly because... The, the first uh, I, time I tried to do this, uh, there was a, uh, it just wasn't going to happen, so I'm having to live stream from my phone. Um, let me, nah, I'm not going to mess with uh, using uh, a different microphone tonight, um, but uh, yeah, I have a, uh, a new instrument, and... Um, this should be interesting. So, uh, yeah, I've, and we're going to completely unbox it. I have not seen this instrument. In fact, um, I have not even seen a single picture of this instrument. So this instrument, uh, was something that I worked out on a deal with a friend. Uh, I won't go into the details here because that's really not going to be that important. Let me just get this back some, uh, but... Uh, so yeah, let's go ahead and uh, gotta maneuver the box because it's not a it's not a small box. Um, here we go. So I'm, it's uh, as you can see pretty hefty. So uh, let's just see what I've got here. And then the box cutter. Now, if all goes well, this should be in really good shape, assuming that it survived shipping. And since it looks like it's packed so well, I'm betting it uh, did have some, uh, good for shipping. All right. So this is going to have to go back down on the floor. It is a thick package. All right. Bubble wrap. We'll save that for, uh, an anxiety attack later. <laughs> and one case. I think that uh, there's only one instrument that this could be. Let me make sure there's nothing else down here in the bottom. Nope. All right. So we're going to take the uh, big box, and you're going to go out of the way. And I've got a five-foot tall case right here next to me. All right, let's open her up. <laughs> oh my, there, I was told there was going to be something else in it. And I was not, uh, I was not expecting that at all. Let's just see what's first off in this surprise. So there's a little leather case in here. And it's a bass recorder. Oh my god, this is so just you know, out of the blue, uh, an extra bass recorder is thrown in. Ah, there's the rest of it. I was like, oh, wait, there's a, so this is a, a Yamaha bass recorder, plastic bass. Um, I, you may know that I do have a bass recorder uh, that's in the uh, German system fingering. Let's just see how this thing plays. All right, 
right, so there may be a, a little leak in there somewhere, but yeah, so I think there's a tad bit of a leak somewhere down bottom range, but totally unexpected. And they're just, my friend threw in a bass recorder and I am just pretty much over the moon with that. That is kind of next level awesome. But that's uh, not what this instrument is. That's not what it was supposed to be anyway. Um, it's supposed to be something much greater. Um, something like this. A uh, great bass clarinet. Um, and as if you don't know, great bass is uh, has become my preferred terminology for the contra alto clarinet. Um, contra alto being essentially a made up portmanteau word, but. Uh, So yeah, there <laughs> two instruments really thrown in, and we've got a mouthpiece here. It this is just a standard stock uh, Bundy mouthpiece, and uh, it is a Bundy contra alto or great bass clarinet in E flat. Um, say what you will about uh, Bundy for most other instruments, their contras are fantastic. Um, oops, we have a bent key, ladies and gentlemen. That's not good. All right, let's see. What is going on here? All right, so I, uh, I had a Yamaha Plastic on an eBay watch list for a long time, but other instruments, gear always take priority, yeah. The, the Yamaha bass recorder I played was like that. Wow, uh, bass better contra. Yeah, it's it's such a much better name, much smaller than the school's Vito contra. Uh, well, okay, so v, um, if it's a Vito contra bass, a B flat, yes, this is a smaller instrument. In fact, this is actually smaller than the Vito contra alto, the E flat as well, because it has a smaller bore size. Um. Okay, so we have some bent keys here, and that was, eh, maybe not, maybe not, maybe they're just kind of cold and frozen. All right, uh, oh yeah, it's, this is, if you're going to go with a, a, uh, plastic contra clarinet you want to go with the uh, this uh, model the bun the Bundy uh, or as it's sometimes known Selmer uh, USA interestingly that the uh, logo on here is not straight it's skewed on there um, so yeah let's uh, Let's give her a, a twirl. It's, it is going to have to um, have some work done on it. And um, I don't want that read. Or something. And let's try that read. All right. So this mouthpiece is designed to take baritone sax reads, which I've got several of. And let's just see what happens. All right, I definitely, this is definitely not a couch instrument. Hmm, uh, we got, we got a leakage here somewhere. Okay, so, um, 
I um, am going to have to figure out where there is a, a leak in this thing. Oh, yeah, we've had several, uh, several bent keys uh, that I'm seeing already. So it's going to take me a while to get this thing. Okay, so, aha! Better, okay. The, yeah, there's a, I feel like there's a big gap in the market between the student and pro model, like you have two choices. Uh, $3,000 Bundy or $20,000 Selmer. Uh, you, you're right. There, there is a gap. Uh, however, you know what? This thing uh, the, uh, plays as well as some of the, the Selmer, the, the Selmer Rosewoods, uh, when, when properly aligned. Um, now, uh, unfortunately, this one does have a considerable uh, number of uh, keys that got uh, pretty bent during shipping. Um, that was um, warned about. So I will... Um, I have to go over this with my screwdriver and pliers and all that fun stuff. And, uh, Jer yeah, Jared is uh, sending me a uh, new, uh, new mouthpiece for it. But, let's see. So what, what's going to happen is um, I'm going to have to go over this pretty thoroughly looking for uh, leaks and bent keys. Uh, but yeah, so I've got now a, a great bass clarinet, contra alto clarinet, E flat contra bass, whatever you want to call it. At some point I will do a full um, video on this. I may do a... Uh, a review on it or history of the contra alto clarinet great bass clarinet we'll see what happens um uh, which would you guys rather have a review or history of the the instrument I, i'll be interested there Uh, why not both? Uh, yes, I, I agree. Yeah, uh, Brendan, yeah, and you've got your own uh, Bundy, so it'd be interested to see how, how they, they compare. Let me just grab my screwdriver from the table here. So one of the bent keys already is uh, the A-flat key. Let's see, what's going on here? So yeah, that is more than just... Just bent, uh, uh, just the screw jamming on it. Alright, so I've missed a bunch. Uh, no, I really haven't. I semi know the history, but I like seeing you teach. Oh, thank you. That's a, okay, that's a little bit better. Uh -huh. All right, so yeah, uh, it's not going to be very interesting to watch me uh, literally screw around with this instrument. Uh, Right, I remember that you needed a, a neck on yours because it didn't come with one. Luckily, of course, this does have all the parts, 
uh, but it, it did get a little bit of damage in the, the shipping. Uh, which uh, my friend who shipped it to me said that that was a distinct possibility. So, alas. Uh, but anyway, yeah, I've got, got this here and it's just going to need some, some work. Would you be getting into fun names? Uh, uh, like I, like um, the, the French clarinet acoustician whose name I cannot pronounce? Um, possible. Um, though, with, uh, particularly with the, the Contra Alto, the great bass, he does not play as big a role as he does with the, the, the Contra bass. So, anyway, guys, uh, I've got it unboxed now, but uh, there's a lot more to do on it. So, I wish I could say it played straight out of the box, but uh, alas, no. Uh, yeah. well, okay, so the, the LeBlanc uh, E-flat Contra Alto... Um, used mostly the same materials as the B-flat Contra, including the same tube, which I don't think a lot of people know. So the it was the same body, uh, at least same body tube, so they didn't have to have uh, separate parts, which made it easier from a manufacturing point of view, but from an acoustic point of view, it was not the right way to go because the LeBlanc E-flat instruments are oversized. Do I have any plans to get a B-flat contrabass? No plans, but I, I absolutely want one. Um, they... You now, what, what's interesting with that is that these Bundys come up all the time but you do not see the B flats uh, get advertised very often. So you see, you see the the E flats all the time, but never the the B flats. And I think some of that is just, you know, uh, these were there was probably a lot more of these made. All right, so I'm just kind of seeing exactly where the damage occurred. Yeah, this may actually have to go to repair tech because this is so badly uh, damaged from the, the shipping, which is an absolute shame. Um, but yeah, I'll... Am I interested in getting a basset horn? Uh, obviously, I would love a basset horn. Um, I cannot afford a basset horn. Basset horns are, uh, pound for pound, the most expensive of all the clarinets. I mean, you're mo looking minimum of 6000 for a used one, if not seven or 8000 Uh, LeBlanc 641. Is that the LeBlanc Basset horn? And honestly, you don't want a LeBlanc Basset horn uh, because they have uh, the ginormous alto clarinet bore. They're not true Basset horns. They're F alto clarinets. Or F tenor clarinets, really. Because the Basset horn is much more of an alto clarinet. But... Yeah, I may be spending the rest of the evening um, going through and uh, fixing this. I've got a cork that just fell off. So, yeah, it's, it's going to gonna take a while. Um, but, you know what? Pretty darn cool instrument and... Yeah, the, the summer alto clarinets tend to, but the problem with the summer alto clarinets is they are um, notoriously out of tune. So 
So, yeah. So, anyway, guys, um, that's me unboxing my, my new toy here. Um, there's going to be, obviously, a lot uh, of work I'm going to have to put into it. But uh, for now, I mean, it, it, it's an instrument. It just um, needs a lot of TLC at the moment. So, thanks, guys. I will, in the next uh, couple weeks, probably do a full video. Um, my uh, video making is going to get... Um, um, lowered somewhat uh, because I, I actually have taken a new part-time job uh, working at a local store um, so uh, yes that was Dr. Mark Wolbers uh, and I, that's a that's a um, consistency problem with all the Selmer Altos every single one I've ever heard of has that problem with uh, just the the lowest notes being uh, out of tune. Yeah, exactly, Brendan. All right, guys. So uh, that's it for tonight. And I'm going to be um, doing repairs for uh, the rest of the evening, looks like. So anyway, thanks for tuning in. And uh, yeah, I got, a, I got a new toy. I got two new toys. I'm, I, I am, I'm excited, but a lot of work ahead. So anyway, thanks, guys.